So I'm here with Wayne Robinson from the Simcoe area, whose friend, Louis Howard, was a person who applied for a marijuana exemption in August last year and then got busted in September. Now, we're not saying that Health Canada told the police to go bust him, but anyway, bad luck. He didn't have his exemption on time. So, I wrote a report and mentioned how they wasted a lot of time. So, here's Wayne's story about what he saw. He's the man who went to the forms, got them, printed them, filled them out, got his friend to go file them, and now tell us your adventure starting on Monday morning when you went and served the Crown. Well, when we finally got the booklet together and it was certified that we had done everything right, we served the Crown uh, on Monday afternoon at the Crown's office and the, and the court office, and neither one of them wanted to accept anything because they, they had nobody there at 2 in the afternoon in order to receive these paperwork. So Lewis, my friend, had to go down to the Crown Attorney's office in downtown Simcoe and appear in person in his office to submit these forms to the Crown. Whereas the Crown uh, warned him if he was trying to, to do uh, some legal maneuvers to get out of his possession charge, he would further the charge with a possession for the purpose of trafficking. Threatened him and uh, the forms got entered anyway by Monday afternoon and Tuesday morning they were brought up in front of the judge which surprised the judge and both the Crown. Uh, they complained that they'd just been given them yesterday and hadn't had a chance to view them. The Crown made a statement that they, he'd seen some serious errors in these forms and didn't know if he could appeal the forms or not, so they took an hour's recess. During that recess, the Crown came over and offered my uh, friend Lewis a business card with a handwritten note on the back to go see legal aid for a screening uh, if a legal or a guilty plea had been entered with no penalty and absolute discharge. They somehow just wanted to have a guilty plea no matter what after 10 appearances this man had made since uh, October of 2010. Uh, at no time did any one of them ever submit to the courts that this man was an exempt D. Upon uh, looking at John's forms, the judge decided he would have to read them to see if there was any errors and they took a break and dismissed court until the 5th of July uh, 2011. And this morning at 9.30, Lewis got a phone call from the uh, Crown, a uh, Jamie Pereira, that uh, stated that due to Lewis's submission of these forms, he was going to have to withdraw his charges and that he would uh, be released on the 5th of July. So Lewis, on John's advice, called up and got an appointment for this coming Tuesday uh, at the court to have the charges withdrawn. Tuesday the 14th. The 14th. Uh, All right, so that's the day we party in Simcoe. <laughs> They kept telling him to get legal advice. Who? Even after he submitted these forms and they had them in their hands in court, they still tried to suggest that Lewis go get legal help and, and have a look in case something uh, backfired on him with this motion. Uh, they didn't want him without representation and they wanted him to plead guilty no matter what, just to a minor possession charge, uh, absolute discharge, no record, and a diversion. So, uh, even Lewis had already applied in uh, 2010, twice he tried to apply for legal aid, but he wasn't going to go to jail for this possession charge, so he wasn't accepted. So, it was, it was more of a runaround and, a, and a, a system that didn't know what the left hand, what the right hand was doing um, until they actually seen the forms in their hand and had one day yesterday to study them. This morning, Thursday, uh, they called at 9 o'clock, 9.30, and, and told Lewis they were withdrawing his charges. And also mentioned that they were not going to proceed with the more serious charge of possession for the purpose of trafficking. So it, it was all in, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, extortion almost on Lewis. It was, it was uh, what do they call that when they har when they harass you? They Coerce. Co Coerce. Co they were Coerce. coercing him to go towards the guilty plea. But at least, don't even mention the exemptions. He had a lawyer, a female lawyer from Simcoe, who told him that he had to plead guilty and it would cost him $2,500 to get off with a diversion. And she was assured that she could get him a diversion for his penalty. But that was $2,500 that a poor man has not. Sure, sure, sure. Like I said in my video, when they see them with the lawyers, they know they're being punished already. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, Lewis is very elated that uh, he, was able to, he was able to clean, keep his record clean. He has no drug charges on his record, and he has a 
clean record. No kidding, it's not nice. It is nice. Yeah. Right? He, yeah. The man was very, very stressed. He was more like a school kid that was getting put in front of the principal for a strap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was it was very shaken. Every time he went to court, he was walking the pace on the floor. He thought he was going to the death sentence. How often would he go to court in a month? Uh, he went twice? twice a month for the first four months, and they went once a month for the remainder of. Uh, or for the uh, oncoming 2011 year, January, February, March, April, and May. All right. Well, that's a dozen times in the court. Oh, a good ten. Not enough for to bum you out. For ten. Now, he can um, obtain his files on these charges, get his records back, stuff like that? Well, yeah, they should get everything back when it's over. Well, that's what I mean. We're going to do that. Yeah. But, but I, uh, I'm sure if you take a look at, at the amount of labor and hours they put in to try and process this, man, they got to be up in thousands of taxpayers' oh, yeah. dollars. Well, that's guerrilla law. <laughs> <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, I hope we uh, we able to help other people with knowing that these forms do work and they do put the courts on their toes as to what the laws are before they uh, slaughter and prosecute a medical exemptee. Yeah. Well, that was a really sad story, you know, and uh, he's uh, another in a long line, actually. Sure, exactly. Yeah. So it's just nice that after we were in Toronto at the Hemp Expo, bragging about all our people who'd had their charges withdrawn in the past, you know, that Louis Howard would come up and within three, four days of the Expo, you know, right. and score it. So it's been, a, it's been a great week for the good guys. It's a great credit for your work, John. Thank yeah. you very much. It's been enjoyable, too. Okay, we have a great story there. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Wayne Robinson, for a great story. So that's it, the Be No Defense. If you know it's a bad exemption and there's no offense, they should let you go.